Hey everyone, I'm Hannah. So last year in 2018, I had two emergency open abdominal surgeries, one in January and one in June. So just five months apart. And today I wanted just to chat through the recovery journey process of both of those surgeries, both physically and mentally, and kind of like how I somehow managed to stay positive throughout it all. Obviously with ups and downs, but ultimately I feel good. <laughs> and this video is sponsored by Ole and their Face Anything campaign, which I kind of thought was perfect for this topic. Oh my goodness. From last year, everything that I went through last year, it genuinely made me realize how capable I am in mind and in body. It's like how amazing, <laughs> how amazing this like fleshy vessel that I go about the world in is. And it really has made me realize that I can face anything. Like if I can go through 2018, then I, I can really face anything. I want to start with just saying that recovery is different for everyone. This is just going to be my experience of like what happened at what stage and how that whole recovery process was for me. But it was such a unique experience and everyone recovers from surgery differently, from trauma, from um, illness. So this is me, basically. And the other thing that it's important to note, and this was something that was so crucial for me to realize when I was in recovery to kind of help with my mental state, which is that recovery isn't like uphill trajectory, like all of the time. It isn't like this linear thing from unwell to recovered. Like what even is recovered? Like I am mostly recovered right now, but there are definitely still some things that I struggle with that I didn't struggle with before my surgeries, so will I ever be fully recovered? Who knows? Yeah, this video is it's, it's gonna get deep, guys. It's gonna get deep. So this video is all gonna be post-surgery. However, I've never really properly delved into my physical and mental state of being before surgery, when I was really, really ill. And I don't really wanna get into it in this video, it's kinda heavy, but I wrote about it in Scarlett Curtis's new anthology about mental health. It's not okay to feel blue and other lies. So I wrote a section for this book, which is about the, pretty much the darkest moment um, of my life. And that's out now if you wanna get it and if you wanna delve into that. But this video is going to be more positive. <laughs> generally, and about that experience post-surgery. Because basically, I was super ill, and then I had my colon removed, and I now have a stoma bag, and basically I woke up from that surgery in a different kind of pain, because I'd just had my body sliced open, but mentally, I just felt alive and awake again. That doesn't mean to say I was suddenly A-OK, -okay and just like, oh my god, great, I have a stoma bag now, yeah! But I didn't feel ill anymore, so I think like the first thing in my recovery was just being grateful. Grateful that the surgery went well, and um, there were no complications, grateful that the diseased organ was out of me, big con diseased colon. That doesn't mean to say it was hard. There were like ups and downs in hospital before I was discharged. I had days where I was just like, this is amazing, I'm not ill anymore. And then I had days where I was just exhausted and tired and in so much pain. And I remember Dan calling me and I had no voice because I was just so weak and tired. Like I couldn't talk and I got so upset that I couldn't talk to my boyfriend on the phone that I just burst into tears. <laughs> um, I felt useless. And then like the next day I felt amazing. So it was just really swings and roundabouts. And basically this whole story of like the months and the years after is a lot of swings and roundabouts, a lot of silver linings, a lot of ups and downs. So the recovery from my two surgeries was very different. Surgery one, because I was so ill and hadn't really eaten like I was just like on death's door before that surgery. It meant that the recovery from that was really slow. And then when I had my emergency surgery in June, so I was five months post op from the first one and I was like good, I was like living life. There was definitely still things that I couldn't do and I was still quite weak, but I was feeling amazing and I was like being able to actively do things. And then that second surgery really took a knock for me, um, mentally more than physically. Physically, it was much easier to recover from that second surgery because I already had a level of 
health. I wasn't horrendously ill going into that second surgery, but I didn't know that at the time. So when I found out that I had to have that second emergency surgery, it destroyed me. I thought, oh my goodness, I have to start from scratch again. I am back to square one with recovery and it really took a knock on me mentally. Also, I keep a five-year diary. So I have in here like every day, like detail of what I was doing so I could actually keep track of my recovery. And when it came to the second one, I was like, oh, I went for a walk by myself today at this time after surgery. But the first time that I did it after the first one was like way after. I was like, oh, I'm like weeks ahead of my recovery, which really then helped me mentally as well because I was quite low after that second surgery, M more low after the second surgery than I had been after the first, which is weird. I think it's because I was so grateful the first time and all of that gratefulness was gone with the second one because I was just like, really, why? Why? How do I deserve this? I actually found in here, which is quite interesting. So I had my first surgery on the 14th of January. I was then discharged from hospital on the 26th of January. And then in here, I've got on February the 16th, walked outside by myself, got a mani-pedi. Before that, I was going outside, but with other people because I had to hold on to them to walk and I couldn't walk really long distances. The day after this was the day that I got my walking stick. So that gave me loads more independence so I could actually like walk further, um, get on public transport by myself. You know, it was the big enough thing, walked outside by myself that it went in the diary. Over a month after having the surgery was the first time that I could walk outside by myself. And that's, wild for such a long time. But the second time round, it was much faster. So I had my second surgery on the 13th of June. Oh, <laughs> I also got a mani-pedi after my surgery. Oh my God. This is the thing that I do, self-care guys. This is apparently my version of self-care is to get my nails done. So I got the mani-pedi on the 23rd of June. So I would have walked to the salon myself to do that. Although I didn't make note of it here. So maybe it wasn't a big deal. So that's 10 days. So 10 days post-surgery going to get a mani-pedi versus over a month post-surgery. So significantly different recovery for both of them. Physical recovery much harder the first time around, mental recovery much harder the second time around. And I wasn't really doing any physical exercise at the first time around. I just didn't feel ready or just like mentally capable or anything like that at all. The second time around though, that was when I really started taking my physical health more seriously. So I started doing like the ab exercises from physio and then you may have seen last year, I did my surgery to 5K series. So by the end of 20, oh, Siri. By the end of 2018, I had run 5K from literally not being able to walk and having my abdominal muscles sliced open, I ran 5K. <laughs> Granted, the slowest I've ever run it in my entire life, but that doesn't matter, it's fine. And even though I'm now like getting fitter and like doing more exercise and stuff, I'm still not at the running 5K level now as I was before my surgeries. And that's kind of what I was getting at at the beginning about not having like an end point in mind. So one of the interesting things that I found with recovery and also how other people perceive it. So from the outside, I'll get comments um, online, but then also some friends have said things like this as well, where it's like, I don't know how you do it. You're so brave. Aren't you bored? <laughs> I don't see it as bravery. I see bravery as a choice. The act of bravery in itself is that you have control over that situation and you are taking that risk, you are taking that jump, you are, you are doing that thing and you are brave. You are strong and you are brave. I didn't have a choice. Everything just happened to me. I was very passive. There was no way to, for me to like be brave because I don't know, I see bravery as an active thing. Whereas I was just completely passive through this whole thing. It's just like everything is just happening to you. It's an interesting one because a lot of recovery is just, just get on with it. Take each day as it comes, basically. I am usually such a forward thinker. Like I always live in the future. I'm not very good at being present. However, going through surgery recovery is like one massive mindfulness exercise because it does you such a disservice to be like, oh, one day when I'm like recovered, like one day when I'm better, that does you such a disservice. You just have to kind of live in the moment, day by day. Okay, right now, a nurse is shoving 
glucose syrup into my mouth. Great. <laughs> Too sweet. I'm a savory girl. I didn't like it. So the reason why I had to have the second surgery was because I had adhesions and it caused like a bowel obstruction basically. And guess what? You get adhesions from having surgery. So the doctors told me this and I was like, wait, what? I got adhesions from the first surgery I had and now you're gonna get rid of my adhesions by another surgery. And that really made me spiral a bit and this is kind of why my mental health wasn't as good the second time around because I was just thinking like, well, this could happen again. For that second surgery, I woke up in pain Monday morning and I had surgery on Wednesday. It was that quick. Like the day before, the Sunday before, I was fine. Like no signs of anything. It just came on so suddenly and two days later, I was being wheeled into the operating theatre. And I think that really scared me because I was like, well, this could just happen any time now. Like, how am I supposed to live my life? How am I supposed to make any plans if this could just happen again? And I remember speaking to like the doctors and nurses about this because I was just like, well, what's the point? Like, what is the point at all? And they had to kind of reassure me of like, one, it's really rare. I just got very unlucky. They also were just like, you can't live like that like anything could happen to anyone at any time. You could get hit by a bus. I know I said that this would be positive, but like, <laughs> hear me out. Like literally you have no idea what is going to happen. There are some things that you just don't have any control over. And so instead focus on the things that you do have control over, which is what you do with your time right now. I understand that now, like I'm, I'm, I'm totally like on board with that now, but when they were saying it to me in the hospital, it didn't quite click. I hope this isn't too much of a downer. What I'm saying is live life. You know, worry about the things that you can control instead of worrying about the things that you can't control. That's my philosophy now, although, well, I try. But yeah, if stuff goes wrong, you just have to face it as it happens. And speaking of facing anything, like I said at the beginning, this video is sponsored by Ole and their Face Anything campaign. The campaign is all about supporting and championing all sorts of people from all different walks of life who are breaking boundaries, fighting for change and facing adversity. Ole wants to help you feel your most confident so you can face anything that life sends your way. And boy, does life send things your way sometimes. I've been using the Ole Regenerist Whip, which is a moisturizer, and I've basically just been using it every morning um, since we did the fancy Ole shoot. And I really love it. I am such a moisturizer fiend. Um, it smells so good. It's like I'm going to the spa every morning, almost. I love it. It instantly absorbs into your face and has like this really lovely lightweight feel and it has a matte finish, which is great because hopefully I'm not looking too shiny on camera right now. Oh my God, I get so shiny. So it's really great to have a moisturizer that is matte. So Ole has actually partnered with Young Women's Trust to help young women across the UK to face anything. Whatever you donate, Ole will match to fundraise a target of £100,000. I'll leave links in the description to more details about how to donate and about the Young Women's Trust. Thanks so much again to Ole for sponsoring this video. So where I feel like I'm at now with my recovery is that it's not dictating like my day-to-day -day activities as it was at the beginning. It's kind of still there in the background. The changes that are happening on as fast and noticeable as they were at the beginning because obviously like I was getting better at a much quicker speed whereas now it's like slow things that I don't really think about every day but maybe like in a few months I look back and I'm like oh I couldn't do that six months ago that's kind of cool and also I genuinely just feel a bit in awe of myself if one can feel in awe of themselves I feel in awe of myself I feel in awe of my body and my mind that I survived and not just survived, I thrived. I thrived, like, through the worst year of my life. Like I said at the beginning, I don't think I fully realised before just how capable I am. I have, like, this newfound appreciation and respect for me, <laughs> which is great. And genuinely, if I can get through that year, I can face anything. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please do give it a like and let me know in the comments about something that has happened to you or something that you've done, either you're active or passive in it, doesn't matter, something that's happened that really showed to you how amazing you are. I wanna hear amazing stories of times you felt capable, times you felt brave, 
times you felt proud of yourself. It doesn't have to be like a health story. It can be uh, personal or school or academic or work achievements as well. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, if you haven't seen yet, I've started a new channel. So on this channel, it's going to be sex and relationships content, um, IBD, stoma, health and content like that. And then on the other channel, it's going to be lifestyle, culture, work, productivity, organization, um, books, books, um, content like that. So if you're interested in the kind of content that I make like that, that is now over on a new channel, More Hannah. Go subscribe. Ding, 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 ding. Thanks for watching. Bye.